In the last few video lectures, I've talked a lot about how you can use some different tools from dplyr to really help you get your data in that tidy format that we talked about in the first lecture for this chapter. In this lecture, I'm going to go through an extended example of doing this using one of the example data, data sets that comes with R. So for this, I'm going to use the VA deaths data set. This is from Virginia. It's from the 1940s, and it's giving death rates per thousand people in Virginia. It gives them separately for different age categories and then for rural male, rural female, urban male, urban female, and so on. So we can load this using data VA deaths. So let's go in and let's also make sure that we load the tidyverse. And then this is data and VA deaths. All right, once you have it loaded, you can check it out if you want. And we can see here there are a few things going on. Uh, first of all, we have the age information over here that's in those row names. You can see it doesn't have a column name. We came across this with the World Cup data as well. So the very first thing that we'll do is we'll pipe in and we'll do, um, first of all, I think it's actually a matrix. We can check the class for that. Yeah, it's a matrix, so we might even need to do as that data frame before we can pull in those row names. But then from the tibble package, we can do row names to column. And in this case, we'll name that um, age. All right, so there are a few things that make this data frame untidy now that we've gotten the chance to look at it just a little bit. The first is that first thing we just handled, that one of the variables, the age category, was saved as row names instead of a column. We're not going to be able to use that in the tidyverse functions unless we can pull it over. Really, tidyverse focuses on using the different columns as it's doing the operation. So we need to make sure that the values we want to use are in their own columns. The next, once we take care of that, we have these other variables like gender and the rural urban, so male, female, and then rural urban. That information's embedded in column names. And even once we get those into their own column, we're gonna have this issue that we have two pieces of information in the same column. So we'll have both um, male, female, and the, the rural urban will both be in the same column. So let's look through a little bit how to tidy those pieces. The first thing I talked about, again, we can use row names to call them, uh, and we can set the variable with the name that we want. That brings it in as its own column. And again, because this started out as a, as a matrix, not even a data frame, I think that you will need to do this as that data frame to even be able to pass it through the row names to column without it messing up. So that converts it from a matrix into a classic data frame. Uh, those are still allowed to have row names. And then we're going to do this row names to column. So we make sure that we bring the, the row names into a column that we can use. The next issue is that we have this information about rural, urban, and male, female as the column names. Again, we want to use that information. These are observations about, or, or information about the unit of observation for each of the values that we're measuring here. So we really like to be able to use that for things like fastening and color as we start plotting. This is a classic case where we want to take this data that's wider right now and pivot it to make it longer so we can bring that information into its own column. So for that, we'll do the pivot longer. And in this case, we're piping in the data, so we don't need to specify that. But we do need to say first what columns we want to bring in. So I'll do the columns. In this case, I'm going to do it by position. These have kind of like their wacky column names with a space in them. So if we keep them as that, if we use those column names, we would need to do some protections of that. And I'll show that in just a minute. But the easiest way to do it might be to say that we want to take columns 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we can say 2 to 5. All right, the next thing that we need to say is what we want to name the new column that's going to get this information. So let's see, in this example, I'm going to name it gender underscore lock, and that really represents that it's got those two pieces of information for both gender and location. Now we're going to end up splitting this, so you don't need to think too much about this column name because we're really going to be changing that column anyway in just a minute. And then the next thing we want to do is values too. Let's see what I'm using for that. I think we could do, um, we could do mortality rate. All 
right, so once we do that, you can see how it's lengthened that data set. So now we have a separate row for each of our units of observation. Our unit of observation here is a combination of an age category, either rural or urban, and then either male or female. So you can see these first three, col three columns are really giving information about that unit of observation. And then our measurement that we're taking, our, our real variable here is the mortality rate. So now the only thing that we have left is a big issue is that we have rural, urban, and male, female, both in the same column. So right now where they're both in that gender lock column, we can't really use them separately. Um, so we need to split those apart. We can use separate to do that. Again, with separate, we're already piping the data in, but we need to say first um, what we want which columns we want to, to separate. So that's gender lock. And then we can specify within to what we want the names for those. So we can say gender and then let's see. We can use gender and then location for the second one. Then the final thing we want to put is what we want to separate it, uh, what character is separating it. So in this case, it's a, it's a space between rural and male. So if we were going through and explaining to this to someone, we'd say, everywhere you see a value in that column, take the thing before the space and put it in the column on the left and the thing to the right and put it to the column in the right. So we can do that with the space here to distinguish where to make that break. So if we run that, now we can see that we have a tidy data frame. We have one row for each of our units of observation, and then we have a separate column for all this information that's either kind of giving details about that unit of observation um, and, and the, the values that you're taking for each of those, or then giving this final measured value of the mortality rate. All right, as our last piece here, we really want to plot something. So things are very easy to plot now that we have it in this tidy form. So we can take the data frame at this point and we can show age category versus the death rate and then add on some nice labeling and all of that and use gender to show color. So let's try that. First of all, if you'll remember because we've just piped but we haven't assigned yet, we haven't made any change to the original data frame yet. If we want to overwrite it, then we need to make sure that we reassign. So let's do that and then we can come down and do ggplot, we could either pipe this data in or we can specify it as the first value here. And then let's map to our aesthetic. So I believe that we had age on the, on the x-axis. On the y-axis, I think that we had mortality rate. And then we were showing color with the ginger, I believe. Yep, and then we'll fast it by rural urban, great, okay. So we can do geom point for that. Once we do that, you can see we've got our scatter plot. All right, so we want to facet by rural and urban. So we can do facet. We could do either facet wrap or facet grid for this one. I'll just do facet wrap, and we will do the location. Oh, and I am seeing, I think that we got the order wrong up on this set of columns. So let's change that so that location comes first and then ginger. And that should be based on the original order of those. Yes, and it was location and then this. So let's just run again and make sure that you load this because we rewrote it. So um, it will need to be reloaded to run from the beginning or you might get an error. All right, so now we have that correctly. So we've got gender, female, and male, and then we've got rural versus urban. And now we can do just a few things to change it up. Like we could use labs to say that X should be age category. Maybe we want to even specify that that's in years. And then we could specify that the Y should give the mortality rate. Do we have something? Oh, yeah, so these are per 1,000. We can specify that as well. And then was there anything else that we changed here? No. Oh, we can change the theme. So I did theme minimal in that example, I think. Let's try in this example doing theme black, white, black and white. 
All right, so we can run that and now you can see that we've made all of these changes. But the key point to remember here is that by tidying up that data, we're able to easily work with it in ggplot and using other, other kind of tidyverse things to explore and map and plot and create tables and summaries of the data. Whereas the original format, it, it would be very hard to conceptualize how to pass that in and ask for the right things from these tidyverse functions in terms of those final steps of kind of visualizing and, and modeling and plotting.